This is a path to greatness. King of Pentacles. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Fact after fact after fact after time after time. And again, say that to yourself one more time. But, but, but again, cliche, I get it. But take the cliche out of it. And really look yourself in the mirror and say, bitch, what doesn't kill me makes me fucking stronger as hell. Doesn't it? Hi guys. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Happy Friday, everyone. We made it through the week. It's been a rough one, but we made it. Um, I did talk a little bit about the post-full moon energies in yesterday's reading. If you didn't get a chance to catch that, link can be found at the top right of your screen, also in the description box and the pinned comment down below. Go ahead and check that out. But man, it was a doozy. And um, I am happy. I'm glad that I did. I was able to pull it together and get back to the collective um, before the week was over. Because I knew, like, I personally, I knew, I mean, shit, I was going through some rough ass shit, man. So I can only imagine that what other people would be going through. So um, thank you guys for hanging in there. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not like you're hanging in there for me, but um, thank you on behalf of your own selves. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, we're getting through this, guys. Things are, I wanted, I, honestly, what I wanted to just say was that things are gonna are getting better but I stopped myself not because they're not getting better but because I didn't want to I didn't want to try and shove that cliche down your throat <laughs> but I mean okay spirit just said it it's always darkest before the dawn and I will say that I personally you know even though I'm fresh out of that horrible horrible moment um, I feel a lot better now and, and, and oddly enough, I feel a lot more optimistic. So I do personally feel like whatever clearing I did during that last full moon, it helped to move something sufficiently out of the way so that there is at least a glimmer of belief and hope for the future. I don't remember who I was talking to about that. Um, but I do remember saying that to someone. I don't remember, I really don't remember who it was, who I was talking to or where I was saying it. It may have been in one of the morning coffee videos or something, but it definitely, at least for me, it feels like at this point, um, it, it, it feels like I can stand up. I can pull myself up out of it and look at, and still see like the aftermath, like the, 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 the scenario in my mind is me standing in a field where a massive war just took place or at least a massive battle just took place and there's just like carnage and destruction everywhere but but in that the the image is of me standing up out of that and looking around me and being like damn that was some shit but you know what we're gonna press forward we're going to press on. And it's interesting. It's just this feeling of just like almost being over it. Almost. And I don't want that to come across as flippant or nonchalant or anything. Maybe I am over it, but that doesn't mean that the memory of it is not still there. And I feel like maybe that was a big thing in the past. It's like, okay, I had gotten through it and I was in a different place in life, but I still wasn't out of it energetically. And that last purge, that last crying fit um, really helped me dislodge a lot of the emotions that were stuck. And the big thing about it was, you guys, was the fact that when I had that moment on Monday, it was from a different point of view. And I mentioned that yesterday, but it was from a completely different point of view. It was from the point of view of now I see more or deeper into why I've been full of so much sorrow and why this has been, or this, these energies, these circumstances have kept me emotionally hostage for a while. 
And it was that realization that I was f finally crying for me, not because I had been hurt, but because, not because I had been hurt, but because I had been hurt, <laughs> which is weird. Like not because I was hurting or not because I got hurt again recently and it re-triggered things, but it was be just because of the sheer fact that any of that has happened. And I mean, it's not like I don't have compassion for the rest of the world too. It's just, it finally set in for me, like my reality for me set in. And that's what I was crying over. That's what I was releasing. So now with that said, there is a brand new point of view. And it's this point of view that I feel like I've been cultivating this whole time, but it hadn't really set in until I was able to release or at least have that moment where I could allow the realization of what I was feeling for my own self. Like standing on the outside, looking in, looking at all this, seeing, seeing this person just completely be crushed and ripped apart and, 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 and emotionally and energetically stolen from and, and all of that, you know? as if I was witnessing, hap witnessing that happen to another human being and my humanity tri tri kicked in. You know what I mean? I hope I'm explaining this correctly. But with that said, I do feel more optimistic about the future, but it's because now I feel much stronger and much more sufficient to be able to handle it and move forward and, and and get myself out of this battlefield that I've kind of woken up in. Wow, 7.17 as I, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. I, 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 we talked about it in extensively yesterday. So if you wanna get more of the information on or the energies around that, watch yesterday's reading. Again, link is in the top right of your screen, also in the description box and the pinned comment below. Let's get into today's cards, yeah? And let's just get into what we have for the collective at the moment. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, places, relationships, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's get into this and see what we've got for the collective today. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Five shuffles. One. Whew. It is 6.30 in the morning. This is two. And I'm drinking a cup of coffee which is normal, this is three, but I am sweating bullets, y'all. Woo! Schwitzen up in here, man. Woohoo! This is four, right? Did I lose count again, guys? Yikes. Uh, we're just gonna call this five, but I do think this is five. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. Oh, first. Also, before we get started, I want to show this new crystal that Stella sent me. If you're on um, Mystic Unicorn, you'll see it. It's going to be part of the setup here, but look at this. Look at this. I don't remember what it's made of um, anymore. Stella wrote it down. Unfortunately, I don't remember, but it's gorgeous. Look at this thing. You guys. Obviously, it's a unicorn. Obvi, but look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? I just... I just like, I just can't. I mean, I just can't. It's so, it's so fabulous. Thank you, Stella. All right, guys. So, 
what do the cards have for the collective today? What's going on, spirit? What do we want to talk about with the collective today? Death is the very first card that popped out, popped right out, you guys. And it is, so far, it's the only, take that one too. It's the only card, nope, no, it's not the only card that's fallen face up. Okay, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Three of Pentacles, all right? So this definitely kind of, especially with what I was saying earlier, in the, or at least in the beginning of this session, this definitely feels like a rebuilding period. And from what I was explaining for myself here in rising up in this battlefield with all the carnage around me, right? Uh, it, this is definitely that moment where you get to, wow, you guys, where you get to say to yourself, okay, now we can rebuild. This is that moment. What the Three of Pentacles is representing here is that moment where you look around you and you say, okay, so that... <laughs> So that happened. Yeah, that happened. All right. So what do we do now to rebuild? And there's definitely an energy of taking charge. Underneath the three of pentacles is the emperor to the magician to the sun to the nine of cups to the king of wands. You guys, this is exactly what I was describing. Thank you. Thank you. Because this is helping me put it into better words. So what do we have here? On the table, we have death and the Ten of Swords, okay? This is the energy, these are the energies that are on the surface. This has come out face up, okay? So death and the Ten of Swords, the ending of the pain. And I know, and, and this comes back to that cliche energy that I, I didn't want to shove down your throat, but big change is happening, okay? Big endings are happening. But this is that moment where you just rise up out of it. Okay, and this is that moment where you say to yourself, you're looking around and you're like, okay, what do we do here? How to rebuild? How do I take charge? How do I manifest what it is that I want? Because now I see much, much clearer. The sun is out now. The clouds have parted. The sky is clear. The rain is gone. The sun is shining. And I can see in front of me. I'm illuminated. My area is illuminated. My surroundings are illuminated. My path is illuminated and I finally feel happy enough sufficiently content enough regardless even though we have this carnage around us there is still a level of internal satisfaction that you're able to find here whatever is falling away from your life right now ten of swords and death okay don't be afraid of that and definitely don't be afraid of death. It is just a transformation from one state of being to another, okay? So no matter what is falling away from your life right now, focus on your internal contentment. Because I bet you, I bet you, the things that are literally being ripped away or forced away from you or just being removed from your life right now are probably things you are better off without. If you really allow yourself, if you take your ego out of the situation, if you take your fear out of the situation, you take the shame, the guilt, the judgment, the what ifs out of the situation and just look at purely where you stand right now, minus any of the things that are falling away from your life, I bet you, you'll be able to find that little glimmer of hope within. Nine of cups, personal satisfaction and contentment and the sun you'll probably feel a lot less burdened. Again, take the shame, the guilt, and the judgment out of it and allow yourself to sink into a personal space of happiness and contentment. And if you are having trouble finding that, that's okay. Take a moment to set the intention to say, I am going to find contentment. I am going to find happiness and then allow yourself to do it. Don't fight against it. Don't, don't allow yourself to get caught up on the little things that come in that try and throw you off. Okay. In find, set the intention to receive or to find the place in which your contentment lies. And then once you find it, stay right there. And don't budge. And don't allow anything to pull you away from that. 
because that sense of personal contentment within you is yours. It is your right to have it, to experience it, to feel it, to find it. Anything that gets in the way or tries to get in the way is literally trying to rob you of your personal happiness. It would rather you be in fear and despair. Don't let that happen any longer. Allow whatever it is that you need to allow to fall away to fall away. And as these things fall away, allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel that not, is a natural byproduct of these things falling away. Allow yourself to feel it. That's the only way you're going to be able to heal it. Okay? This is beautiful, you guys. We have three more cards that have fallen face down. So that would be energies that are underneath the surface here. And I also, I already feel like these three cards are part of the transitional period or maybe even somewhat part of the next phase that you're moving towards. Ooh. Oh, you have the Ten of Pentacles. You have the Empress. But you also have the Ten of Cups in reverse. So first of all, let me say you have three tens on the table here. Uh, four transitional energies, I will say, because of the three tens, but you also, uh, you have death here with that, but okay. But you have the ten of pet swords, the ten of cups, which is in reverse, but the ten of pentacles. This is a ten, ten, ten. Okay, this is a time to release, time to let go, time to move forward, time to heal. Completion. And you have the Empress sandwiched in between the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. But the Ten of Cups is in reverse. And you guys, what this is saying to me here is this is not about the community. This is not about the collective. This is not about the people around you. Yes, the community, the collective, the people around you, the Ten of Cups, is going to be a part of your reality regardless. However, this is a moment for you to get in touch with you. To, for you to be that unconditionally loving, nurturing source of life and acceptance and unconditional love for yourself. I feel like what is a, there's a big lesson that's being completed here, Ten of Pentacles, and that's about no longer giving too much of yourself in order just to receive pennies. I guess we could say this feels like a, a strong either this is a big lesson or this is a big moment a big moment in self-care the empress or this is a moment of coming into a balanced feminine aspect in your life this is uh, uh, there are two things that i'm getting from this first is loving yourself unconditionally okay as you go through this healing process but it's also loving yourself unconditionally outside of the crowd. Outside of the community, outside of the people around you that surround you, that influence you, that try to push you towards things that you may not actually want. So that what I said earlier about allowing yourself to release the guilt, the shame, the judgment, that's this, Ten of Cups in reverse. Whatever it is that you're experiencing that is causing certain things in your life to fall away, it's necessary. And this is all about, this is exactly why the Empress is here. This is all about getting better in tune with yourself and giving yourself that loving, nurturing, compassionate, unconditional love to feel what it is you're feeling, express what it is you need to express Become aware of what it is you need to become aware of so that you can rebuild yourself. Oh, shit. There's the emperor. I totally forgot about that. This is literally about taking charge. So this is so that you can take charge, the emperor, and rebuild in your life in a way that is more in alignment with you. For many of us, this is about giving yourself 
the same unconditional love, care, compassion, and attention that you give to other people. Ten of Cups in reverse. It is time for you to do this for yourself. Okay? What is next? I want to pull what's next and then maybe we'll get into a little bit of clarification, yeah? All right, so what's next for the collective? What else do you want to say to the collective at this time, please, Spirit? Anything else that you want to say to the collective at this time? Okay, yeah, overall energy is the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles is the new start, is the fresh beginning, is moving forward in the new the new way, on the new path, okay? Ooh. This is a path to greatness, you guys. What you have here, all of this that's come out next is underneath the surface. So again, this is internal work. First thing I want to say is you have two cards that have fallen out on the original pile where we were talking about Ten of Cups in reverse, the Empress, the Ten of Pentacles. What you have here is the Queen of Cups and the Eight of Swords. You want to break free? Then feel what is your feeling. Express yourself. Again, give yourself that unconditional compassion, unconditional love to accept what it is you're feeling and to accept where it is that you find yourself in life and to accept how that makes you feel. There is also, yes, there is also a level of responsibility that needs to be taken here. But spirit is saying that is a minor detail. Okay, we don't want you to get caught up on that and to allow that to keep you in this mental prison. No, we're not asking you to feel through this stuff so that you can be even more angry with yourself and hurt yourself even more. No. What we're saying to you is, if you want to get out of here, Eight of Swords, then you have to come to terms with what it is you're feeling. Or you have to come to terms with what it is you find around you at this current moment and how that makes you feel. Just like with me, on Monday, I had that breakdown. I literally was sitting on my floor here, sobbing, crying so hard, that the back of my head was sore, crying so hard that I was literally hyperve like hyperventilating to the point where I was getting lightheaded and my whole body was buzzing and vibrating with the, the sheer um, force of the emotion that was running through me at that time. And it was all because I was coming to terms with how my position made me feel. And it was not about the other people any longer. It was not about the other circumstances any longer. It was not about anything else other than me seeing where I am and where I had been for so long and finally coming to terms with that. But now that I allowed myself to, to go through that and to experience it and to see it from that point of view, now I can make a change. Holy sh**, you guys. I can make a change. Page of Cups, King of Cups. What is the King of Cups here? Well, first of all, the King of Cups is the counterpart to the Queen of Cups. Okay? But the King of Cups represents the emotional maturity. So the King of Cups in this situation represents me being on that battlefield. Right? Having gone through that emotional clearing. And now waking up, looking around me, standing up, that's where the King of Cups comes into play. Not just waking up on the ground like, where the hell am I? Oh my God, somebody come save me. No, waking up, saying, where the fuck am I? And then getting up, picking myself up and saying, I can handle this. I know. I have expressed, I have felt, I have moved myself out of this entrapment. And now I'm going to do what is emotionally mature. I'm going to handle this from an emotionally balanced place, doing what I know is right, but what I am 
starkly aware of is not easy. And I'm going to start new. I'm going to build new. I'm going to take the carnage that I find around me. I'm going to mulch it up, use it as fertilizer, and grow my new life. This is a path to greatness. King of Pentacles. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Fact after fact after fact after time after time. And again, say that to yourself one more time. But, but, but again, cliche, I get it. But take the cliche out of it and really look yourself in the mirror and say, bitch, what doesn't kill me makes me fucking stronger as hell. Doesn't it? I'm still here, aren't I? And I don't mean that to slight or shade anyone that has crossed over. All my love and respect to you and to yours. But we are still here. And we are only going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And stronger. Jinx wants to come in. I want more coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let's get some clarification going, yeah? Uh, really, only thing that I really want to talk about in clarifying here is this Ten of Pentacles energy, right? Because this is what is next for us. And I just feel this Ten of Pentacles energy is like, yeah, okay, the Ten of... I'm sorry, not the Ten, the King. The King of Pentacles represents um, someone who's very... Uh, wealthy, has a lot of money, has a lot of material, has a lot of possessions, has a lot of status, has a lot of clout, has a lot of authority in the physical realm. This is a master of the physical elements. So yes, the king of pentacles can represent having a lot of money or being very well off or a strong businessman or woman or something like that. And sure, that will come, but that's not the real focus here, you guys. You have to remember, we're spiritual beings having a physical experience and whatever it is we acquire in the physical world which is what the king of pentacles does represent um we can't take any of that with us when we actually transition back into the spirit world so it's not about the possessions it's not about the money it's not about the fame it's not about the physical legacy as in like money and all that stuff and estate and all that stuff all of that will come but it comes when you get solid, real solid in yourself. And this King of Pentacles feels like this is us knowing ourselves intrinsically on a much deeper level. And that makes us more solid and secure in who we are as these spiritual beings having a physical experience. So with all of that said, let's clarify. Three shuffles, one. Two, three. All right. So what is this King of Pentacles for the Collector? First of all, strength is at the bottom of the deck. Y'all better do it. That is some serious strength right there. Pulling yourself up out of the out of the out of the ashes, out of the dust, out of the rubble, out of the carnage, and saying. I got this. I got this now. That's that's the phrase. Not just I got this. It's no 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 no. Now I got this. I got this now. King of Pentacles. Yep. Okay. at the bottom of the deck is the six of swords now as i was talking about um what this king of pentacles energy was what i was describing really made me feel like a strong king of wands energy you know having that confidence in yourself and belief and 
knowing that you're going to get through it or knowing that you're going to end up somewhere or being confident in yourself enough to say nothing's going to stop me now. Well, there it is right there. King of Wands. King of Wands, Three of Wands, Knight of Wands, Four of Swords. Look at all those Wands energy. And the, oh, oh, there's more actually because there's also the Ten of Wands here. But okay. Um, ah, that's right. You do have the Ten of Wands here. Okay. But from this King of Pentacles energy, now, we have all of the Tens now. Big completion, guys. Big completion. We literally have all the Tens on the table here. Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Wands. Now, in terms of this Ten of Wands here, with clarifying this King of Pentacles, which is you being solid, stable, sturdy within yourself, ready to move forward, right? Being a stronger version of yourself than you were in the past. Yes, there are still a little bit of burdens here, but there's something to take into account because you have the Four of Swords. This is... Uh, being very clear-minded, clear-headed. Knight of Wands is activation, is drive, is purpose, is inspiration, right? Wanting to move forward. Three of Wands and the King of Wands. So with this Ten of Swords energy, I'm sorry, Ten of Wands energy, there is, a, there is a feeling of drive, wanting to move forward, okay? There's also a feeling of confidence. There's also a feeling of being future-focused, future-oriented. But what you need to do right now is think about ten of swords. I'm sorry, four of swords. Think about what it is that you need to be released. That the burdens. What are the burdens that need to be released from your life at this time? And that takes me back to what I was saying about um, standing up and allowing yourself to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Because look, the ten of cups is here in reverse. Okay, and the Ten of Cups represents the other people, the collective, the society, the social surroundings, your friends, your family, your community, your community. That's the word. That's the best word. Community, right? But what about you? With the community wants all kinds of stuff, but what do you want? Queen of Cups, Eight of Swords, the Empress. Allow yourself to unconditionally love yourself enough to say, I have every right to get out of this entrapment that I find myself in. So in order to do that, you're going to need to sit down with yourself in this confident place, in this stable, sturdy place, in this activated place, okay? And say to yourself, all right, we're future forward oriented, three of swords. So what is it that needs to be released? Ten of Wands. I'm not going to try and define that for you or for the collective. That is something that you need to work out personally on your own. However, the overall energy here is the Six of Swords with the Ace of Swords and the Seven, and the seven of Pentacles. Six of Swords is moving forward. Ace of Swords is truth, knowledge, awareness, victory. Seven of Pentacles is learning from the past and creating a better future as a result of it. And then you have one last card here, and that did fall face down. This is your overall energy, I'm sorry, your, under, your energy that is under the surface in terms of this King of Pentacles being solid and stable and sturdy within yourself, being a brand new you, but a much stronger you. Well, the energy that's underneath the surface of that is the motherfucking chariot. Driven. Drive. What does not kill you makes you stronger. And also kind of gives you a sense of purpose, doesn't it? However fleeting that may be, or however momentary that may be, but still. That definitely feels like an, an aspect here. Yeah. Okay. Closing Oracle Guidance. Um... I do want to get it from the Gods and Titans deck today. Bobby, you totally influenced this. I, I did a reading with Bobby yesterday, and Bobby actually sent this, uh, this deck to the, to the channel um, for the collective, and she reminded me that I had it. And I really like this deck. Um, but, and so I'm, that is part of the reason why I want to use it. But also, we're talking about this... I mean, yes, we have both the masculine and the feminine here, but there's a strong masculine 
dominant energy in this situation. So I definitely want to go with some guidance from the masculine. So gods and titans deck. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's see here. Five shuffles. One. Two. All right, y'all. Here we go. Closing Oracle Guidance from the Gods and Titans deck. There it is right there. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. What does not kill you makes you stronger. Osiris, renewal. Check it out. You guys, this is, this is nuts. Because if you're not familiar, Osi uh, and, and, and I'm not, I'm in no way am I an expert here, and I'm paraphrasing, and I'm probably describing it in, I, I don't mean any disrespect, but, but, Osiris was the divine counterpart, or is, excuse me, is the divine counterpart of Isis. And Isis and Osiris can be seen as the, one of the, as one of the first examples of twin flame energies. The dynamic between the, ma the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And part of their story was that Osiris was murdered. And his body was chopped up into pieces and scattered all over the earth. And Isis found all of the pieces and put him back together. So, so, since we had the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, since we had the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine come through in this reading in the realm of the Emperor and the Empress, the Empress is here, the Empress was at the, I'm sorry, the Emperor was at the bottom of the deck. The focus here in this session is to allow your sense of feminine receptivity, unconditional love, care, and nurturance to break you out of this prison so that you may be renewed. And that is where the balance between the masculine and the feminine comes in. You guys, you're not, you will not be able to break out of this if you don't have the compassion and the unconditional love for yourself to love yourself out of it. That's why we have the Ten of Cups in reverse here. This is not about, this is not about the collective right now. Yes, in the grand scheme of things, it's all about the collective. But right now... This is about you, your feelings, where you've been hurt, and how it is you can release yourself from this. But you will not be able to do that without the divine feminine. Jinx, you're going to have to wait because I'm almost done. I'm going to read this whole thing. Oh, wow. Pay attention to your need for rejuvenation and renewal, both physically and mentally. You are invited to experience the magic of hope. Perhaps one of the most enduring gods of resurrection, Osiris, husband of Isis, is one of the key members of the Egyptian pantheon. Son of the god, so, sorry, son of the earth god. You, are you serious, Jinx? She's, gonna, she's just going to have to wait. 
son of the earth god Geb and Nui, goddess of the sky, Osiris developed into a god of death and rebirth after his own violent death. The story of Isis's love and devotion to Osiris after his brother Set killed and dismembered, his, dismembered him is central to Egyptian myth. After Osiris's murder, Isis traveled the earth looking for the pieces of his body. <sighs> Sorry guys, that's too distracting and this is too important to miss, so hold on. Let's start that again. The story of Isis's love and devotion to Osiris after his brother Set killed and dismembered him is central to Egyptian myth. After Osiris's murder, Isis traveled the earth looking for the pieces of his body. She then cast a powerful spell, which brought her husband back to life long enough to conceive a son, Horus. Then Osiris retreated back into the underworld. As a deity of resurrection, Osiris gave hope to all that there is an afterlife and that death can be transcended. Death can be transcended. Osiris did not judge his death. I'm sorry. Osiris did not just judge the death, but was also responsible for their afterlife and reincarnation. As a result, the energy of rebirth and renewal is tied more to Osiris than, than the other lords of the underworld. Ancient Egyptians created complex magical processes, rituals, and rites with Osiris as the central figure to ensure a successful resurrection after death. Depicted with green skin to signify his role as the force behind germination and fertility, Osiris ruled over the flooding Nile and budding crops. You can call upon Osiris when you need to be renewed, when you are tired physically or mentally, his magical energy will nourish you. When you feel like there is no hope, particularly after trauma or a difficult relationship, his presence will soothe you. Osiris also appears when there is a beginning or transition close at hand. And that's one of the things that I was saying when I had my breakdown on Monday. I just felt tired. And not just physically, my soul was tired, exhausted. The shadow side of Osiris's card says, if we push ourselves too hard, destroy our, our bodies, or pay no heed to the fruitlessness of our relationships, sometimes it becomes too late or too difficult for complete renewal. Pay attention to your own self-care and your own rejuvenating power. Should you need to, take time to rest and repair. Osiris's visit often indicates the need for a retreat or holiday, so not heeding this could make you less efficient and happy. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>